Winnery. And then you're seeing the Dinsu River. If you've been, been here for some time, I'm sure you knew the state of the Dinsu River. This is how it looks like now. And we took this video just last week. So these separate three videos you're watching uh, from the Enyinem uh, uh, Township, also from the Awinare Mining Area, and now the Dinsu River. These are the drone footages showing you exactly what the Dinsu River looks like in the eastern region. So you've seen a bit of what's going on. But I want to give you some statistics again before we go to our panel. And so far, what we do understand is that we have almost 200, uh, 2 million people involved in illegal mining. Out of these 2 million people, we have also an additional 4.5 uh, million individuals, we understand, are uh, benefiting directly from the activities of illegal mining. I also want to remind you again, per the data that we have, that economically, the country loses about $2.3 billion annually due to illegal mining. We also, from data giving us, have about 2.5 million hectares of our forest cover destroyed. That's about 12% of Ghana's forest cover. And of course, we've already seen the impact of this on our cocoa sector. Let's start this conversation with uh, the man I call Carlos, who is an illegal miner who joins us right in the studio here. Hello, Carlos. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Can you first tell us why you're involved in illegal mining? Thank you. I first joined illegal mining because of poverty. I was working with one of the company called Seti Company in Kumasi, Ahinsang. And one day, one of my friends called me and said that, hey, Jack, there is a galamsey going on at Amansia West, and a town called Yakurum. So let's go there. That was 2011. So we just went there. When I went there, the first week, I got only three hundred cities. So when we go on break, I return back to Kumasi and then I inform him that the work is very too hard. I can't do it. And he said, oh, there is many in, more than the one we are doing in Kumasi. I said, okay, then I'll go. So I went there 2011, 2012, 2013. Then I'll move from that place to uh, Tuntukrum in the same district. From Tuntukrum, I went to Watreso, where the river Oda is. Right from there, I moved to um, Amenfi, Amenfi Central, that is Ejakama. So I went there to, and there is a chief called Nana Kasa. That time he was the chief that time. And now I learned that he has passed away. So we, I do a lot of Galamsi activity. But what I realize is that the most land we are destroying, the chiefs are part of it, and then the politicians. And sometimes too, the prominent people in the society, they are part of it. So you say chiefs and politicians. And Did politicians. you work for any of these uh, agencies that were directly owned by uh, politicians or chiefs, as you claim? I went to one politician. Now he is standing for MP. So oh. these are the people they are involved in doing Galamse. And I work personally at Forest 2, uh, that is NT Forest. And there is a river there called Yoyo, uh, Ankara, and then the Suhema. The Yoyo is in the forest. And then the Ankara and then the Suhema, they stream straight to the Yoyo. So we have destroyed the Yoyo, uh, the Suhema, and then Ankara. So when the uh, Suhema and Ankara go straight to the Yoyo, and the Yoyo to take to the um, uh, this river, uh, tunnel. So sometimes the forestry will follow. When they come and they meet us, they collect something. You're alleging that the forestry commission people. This one, I will not say alleged. Alleged. It's not alleged. It's alleged. It's not alleged. Mm. I'm not alleged. I'm, talk, I'm telling you the fact. Okay. Yeah. They collect something. Sometimes they leave their number, and every week we send it to them. How much do you normally send? 
there are three types. We send to you, and then where we will leave, we have another one there. So we send 600 CDs every week. 600 CDs every yes, week? Yes, 600 CDs every week. So tell us, what do you normally do as an illegal miner? Because I know there are different roles and responsibilities on site. What do you personally normally do? We, we are just a lay workers, lay my workers. We, um, we are doing the, all the work. Like that for us, we don't use excavators. We use only shovels and picks. That is what we do. So as for if you call it um, manpower, ours we do manpower. But we have those big sponsors. We are using excavator, one leg, chamfine. They are using those things. But for we, we are using manpower. And you work for those who use the chamfines and the other big I have worked with some before. And later on, I decided to work on my own. But I don't have money to buy land. I don't have money to buy pumping machine. I don't have money to buy artists. So at first, we just go to the forest. The forest, we call it no man's land. So when the forestry come, and then you are able to sort them out, then they leave you to work. So every week, you give their parts. So what does a typical day look like? Uh, at first, when I went to Yakro, my week was trend cities, and the later on, we moved to Daymark at Kunsu, I call it um, uh, 250. It depends. A day? Yes. Sometimes you get 100 cities, sometimes 150, and it depends. And how long does it take for you to get that amount of money? How much work do you have to do? We don't have a crit of work. Sometimes we can start off from 12 o'clock and then we close 6 o'clock. Sometimes we can start from 8 o'clock. It depends. You can work here, we do it two hours, two hours. Every two hours, then we rest for a while. And then we come back every two hours, we rest for a while. How do you protect yourself? We don't have anything to protect ourselves. Do you get support? Like what? Support, let's say, from either state agencies, aside from the Minerals Commission people you say or claim come to take money from you, police or any other agency that helps protect you? No. We don't have any police to protect us. But the moment you see police on the site, first, either they will come and see you are biased or there is an operation going on. Apart from these two things, you will never see any police officer in sight. Either they are come to see you are biased to collect their share, or they are assigned assignment for uh, uh, maybe to drive away the Galamsee people. But for that, they can't. They can't drive you out? They can't. So this uh, call f by the government or people for the government to government stop this? Government cannot count unless he involved the chiefs. Tell us why you think so. Because the lands are owned by the chief. If the chief say that me, as for my town, I will not allow Galamsey, no government in power go and do Galamsey over there. Because eh? we believe in traditional cursing and spare on the land. If the chiefs and the elder decided that we will curse a spare on the land or we curse the land, anyone who will go and work there and will catch you, maybe you pay this amount of sheep plus money, plus this, plus this, plus this, no one will go there and work. So what you're claiming is that there's no way the government can stop illegal money? There is no way, unless he involves the chiefs. Uh, in our earlier conversation, you told us that uh, you still managed to gather some money to buy a piece of land from a chief. Yeah, that land, uh, there is a problem on it. Last week, the chiefs over there called me to discuss about that, and, but I told him that, as for me, as for the Galamsi, I will not do it again. So the so, chief knew that you were buying the land for illegal mining or Galamsi? Yeah, they know. Even if we buy cocoa land, some of them buy cocoa land. Yes, I have numbers I can give you to you. You can pretend it, and you say that you want to buy a land. You get it. I would come back to you, uh, uh, 
call, uh, Carlos, as I, as I call you now, but I want to get the preliminary thought, really, of uh, Council uh, Sam Okuja to the... I mean, we are looking at deploying the military, but as I said earlier, this is not the first time that we send the military to our forest or areas infested with, with illegal mining. And there's a saying that you cannot really find success until you've been able to identify what your failures are. And so we would admit here that indeed there's been a failure on our part over the years. Well, isn't it possible that the cooperation that is ne needed with the various agencies, and as the Carlos. Carlos has said, particularly the chiefs who are the owners of the land, the headmen, the assembly members, all of them are important in this subject. And I recollect that maybe some four years or even five years ago, the Council of State actually had a seminar where they invited the chiefs from those areas and others and showed them videos about water pollution, the effects and the rest of them. And they promised, all of them, that they will go and ensure that this illegal mining should not participate. But all we hear now is that there is even an increase in the matter. And I even remember that we went to the western region and saw the river and cobra. Eh? We, we went by air. So we flew and you can just see the yellowness of the water all around. And it is scary and frightening because unless there's cooperation, cooperation between the chiefs, hmm, the assembly members, the MPs, the DCE. the DCE, and the political parties, the political party, I'm emphasizing these political parties, that they all need to come to a consensus on the matter. Because it looks like somebody is blaming someone on the radio, or on television, or in the newspaper. But oftentimes you find out that those who are doing the blame are themselves the ones doing the thing. I'm glad you talk about political parties because you are in a position where you can advise the president, a man who put his presidency on the line. Would you say that the Council of State, after reviewing these things, perhaps also went to sleep and didn't really push to ensure that we stopped this, and now we are where we are? Well, I'm not here to defend Council of State or to speak for the Council of State, so let's be careful now the way you are going about it. What I'm telling you is that the Council of State had been about this illegal mining, and that they took the trouble to call a whole derba at the uh, co International Conference Center, where all these big chiefs all came, with all the people involved. Videos were shown by us, with uh, what's called the Council for, uh, what's the name, NCCR? CSIR. CFIR. With all that was done, you said they went to sleep. We are no policemen. Council of State is not a policeman. Council of State can only bring consciousness to other, both the presidency, the political parties, and the rest of What them. did you tell them? No, you are still jumping the matter. I'm just telling you that this is what happened. We now hear that this matter is going completely out of hand now, to the extent that people say they are going to do a demonstration. We hear political parties attacking one another. And I'm saying that, why don't they rather come and sit down together and plan a course of action involving the chiefs, perhaps even threatening the chiefs. To say, because as you, you know, Otunfo this sacked these two, three of his chiefs, prominent chiefs, because they were involved in what? Galamse. In Galamse. And if the political parties and the government opposition, and all those people are all uh, uh, forming political parties and say they are going to stand for election. If all of them can sit together and say, enough is enough. Let's stop this thing because it is detrimental to the progress of the country. Because so far as I am personally concerned, is the water that I'm worried about. The water. 
that is no longer possible for the Water and Sewage Corporation to purify those waters for safe drinking. In fact, if somebody even tell me that they are purifying in a cabidron, I would just say that it's not true. I would say it's not true. You know why? Because we are talking about mercury and uh, what? Cyanide. And cyanide. You can't, you can't, there's nothing you are going to use. There's no chemical that I'm aware of which is available to clean the water that has been contaminated. So mercury. I want to get you clearly. You're, you're saying that instead of those people going on a protest, they could have come together on uh, and had a conversation on the way forward. So you're against that protest that was held? No, 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 no. Hey, anybody who say you want to protest, that's his business. I have no word right. As I'm a lawyer, I cannot tell that somebody does not have a right to protest or to march. I cannot say that. All I am saying is that in Ghana, we like to oppose rather than making suggestions. That it would be better for us to make suggestions as to how we can solve the problem. And what you are asking me now is the suggestion that I am making to the effect that why don't the political parties sit down together? But what advice, what advice is the Council of State, of which you are a member, are you giving the president about this very issue? Why do you talk mind? about advising the president? I keep warning you all the time, because every time you jump on this issue and you talk about what advice that the Council of State gives, I say, what the Council of State advise the president, the Council of State gives the president, is not something that I am supposed to come and tell you, or something I am supposed to come and parade <laughs> on radio or television. Well, people want to know because no, this please, is a man who put please his just get it quite clear. That's the, that is not the role that the council is supposed to play. If the council goes to the president and advise the president, that's a matter between the council and the president. I am not even the spokesperson for the council to go on, on television and making an announcement that this is what we advise the president. So please just get that quite clear. You are asking me as a Ghanaian, as an individual, I am telling you that my view is that much of the problems of this country, not only Galamsey only, a lot of the problems facing the country can easily be resolved if those who are making the opposition, those who are doing or acting or not acting, can all sit down together and jaw jaw and they could be able to find solution. This is my view. Mm, Doc, I'll come to you very shortly, but I want what? to get a, the, the view of Professor Stephen Aday. Listening to the illegal miner give this information, and indeed the preliminary comment of, of, of lawyer Samu Kujeto, I'm, I'm just wondering what's going through your mind. Several things, and I'm glad you're asking me to react because I'm not an expert in the mining as such. But first of all, I want to make it clear that your footing is not representative. Yeah. There's far worse and widespread. And when Carlos was talking about, he mentioned a man's here is going on very close to my house in uh, Adansi, but I recently passed through Dentra to Wasa, I mean, Fi to Wasa, uh, Fiasi, and if you go there, what you are showing is like the tip of an iceberg. It's far, far west. And the danger Ghana is facing is bigger than going just to the eastern region. So that's the, the first thing. It's a bigger menace. Number two, I think that Carlos is right. This is... Uh, we call it an evil coalition between politicians, mm -hmm. that of chiefs, mm -hmm. and the security agents on the ground. They have their district uh, security uh, coordinators, and uh, I don't think that it, there's any serious action mm -hmm. going on there. I had the, uh, whether the fortune or misfortune, of stating that, especially for our rivers and the forest, there must be a declaration of a national emergency. And a lot of made out of it, headlines in there. But the basic thing is this. We are talking about the life of a nation. Even the water river is not exempt mm. because they are now mining the top tributaries. So, the 
And if it continues, you will not get it only uh, poisoned, but also with all this debris and everything else. We have all the rivers, the Brim, the Tano, the Cobra, the, all of them. So I think that whether it is the chiefs and everything else, and I like, I must say that the Ghanaian civilian community and leadership have started acting because this, if that had not occurred, parliament will not be meeting tomorrow because they will talk about uh, NDC as if it's a relative. When we were there, we did this. Yeah. But no, it is a lie. Yeah. It has been escalating yeah. for the time. past 20 years or so and getting worse every day. Get, and, getting worse every day. So you're saying that we're not doing enough. So uh, do I hear you say that whatever measures the government says it is putting in place now, including sending some soldiers, is a charade? Well, what is being done today, to, up to now, we haven't done enough for that and I won't be here. But I think that some positive steps are okay, okay. just going to revoke that law that allows mining in the, in the forest. I think it's a first step. I believe that that law itself was put in place so that the politicians and the allies could seriously rape Ghana before they would then take this action because they have seen this all the time. But at least now, it, the revocation is... The second has to do with using modern technology. Mm -hmm. Drones, my dad just mentioned when we're coming here. We can monitor all our rivers 24 hours. hours. But Pompom brought that thing out with that technology and we don't seem to have taken it seriously. And it is available. It's available. Now we must, as Ghanaians, yeah. insist yeah. on it. And also allow the government and the security agents when therefore and this should be done open. That's right. It's not that you know it's being done and it's being kept like the, we do with the declaration of assets. You know, you can steal as much as you want because nobody will ever open your envelope. And that's what we see being done every time. No, this thing, and you could help. When the drones go, you will then project it. And people who are poisoning us must be dealt with surgically. These things must be destroyed on the spot, and we shouldn't allow them, especially in the river bodies and in our forests. I want to come to you, Dr. Tony Edu. You heard uh, Obin. Tony Obin. Obin. <laughs> you heard. <laughs> <laughs> you heard. <laughs> you heard. Your name. That's right. <laughs> As a serious all, change. All former documents are valid. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you heard. Uh, you heard the uh, Carlos, the illegal miner, giving us his bit. Mm -hmm. And having listened to where we are now, you've been there before as a former CEO of the Minerals Commission. Uh, first, your preliminary thoughts, and then we'll go into some of the alternative measures that, at this stage, where everybody seems to be against it, we want to end it. What we need to look at going forward. Well, thank you. I mean, I, I, I couldn't agree more with all that has been said here. They are all true, very, very true, and especially coming from Carlos, who is actually the, the, the this, this, this animal that lives in water, yes. crocodile, crocodile, who just come out, or the or, or a fish that has come out to say crocodile is dead, maybe. So, so I think it's it's very sad, very worrying. Now, I, I think that the Ghana is probably the only country or maybe uh, mining is the only economic activity that moves from small scale to large scale. And then in between, there's nothing there. But what we see is something above small scale and probably below large scale. Mm -hmm. What we see is something less than Anglo Gold Ashanti, but bigger than the small scale that uh, Carlos would be doing. Mm -hmm. So there's a problem. There's a problem of enforcing our laws mm -hmm. and, and, and actually ensuring that the regulations, because the laws are there. For instance, uh, Prof said mining on water bodies. Mm -hmm. Our laws are very clear. It's you illegal. can't mine on water bodies. It's, it's a no, 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 no. Yeah. So if mining is going on in water bodies, it, it, it must worry us quickly. But who will bail the cat? Who will stop them? Then they say the small scale mining is only for 
uh, Ghanaians. Mm -hmm. But then you see people who don't, on the physical, you cannot look up <laughs> these days because of, because of uh, naturalization, you can't say that, but otherwise. There are some people that you see, they look occasion, they look like they come from China, China right. and then they are actively there. That's right. But, but I know, but, but our law says nobody apart from Ghanaians. So when you see them, there shouldn't be any problem at, at all. Arrest and question them, or arrest and, and the laws are there. There were some time passed that there were no clear laws about even the equipment that were used in the, in the, in the, in, in the mine, in, you know, but now there's a law. Uh, even the punishment, it was, I had been in court when uh, somebody who had conducted serious galamsey and they, they just gave him some two, one month or something. So, the, but the law these days, the punishment are very it's stiff. Very severe. But yes, but, but we are unable to enforce. So the, the, the current effort, I think, um, a, a probably good as a preliminary effort, but we need a more sustainable uh, uh, effort than, than, than just because, you know, this is a third time in the last decade and a half or so that we are actually using the military. 2013, mm -hmm. military was deployed and then uh, after a while we stopped because it is not sustainable. And then 2017, 2018, Mass military right. went out. Now the funny, and then this one, that we, have we sat down to, to learn what happened you know, in the period where we're using the militaries? What, what, what were the issues? Uh, and, might, you might talk about evaluation. Evaluation. Yeah. You know, I don't think we've done that. We just come and then we start doing something. Knee jerk approaches. Now, now I also think that um, uh, for me, sometimes even the people are supposed to stop. Mm. They themselves, sometimes they come and see the beauty of the game yes. and they join. You just heard Carlos there yes. talking about yes. the Minerals Commission. Yes, yes. I, I know. When, I want forest commission, you, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. The, the Forestry yeah. Commission, I keep saying Minerals Commission. Yeah. Commission. Yeah. I, report, yeah. I will report you to them. <laughs> yes, Forestry yeah. Commission. So, so I, I think the Minerals uh, Commission give them the permission. That's, to do that's it. That's no, no, no. Illegal mining, Mineral permission, Mineral Commission won't give you a permit to go and do illegal mining. But the problem is that. five hundred. Uh, mines, uh, uh, licensing, yeah, the, the but the problem is that it's actually legalizing illegality. Yeah, the problem, the problem is that uh, you have these big, you know, in, in those days, the history behind our regular, regularization of small scale mining. I think the thinking was that it was going to be pickaxes and shovels. But if you look at the law, how it was made, the thinking was that simple implement would be used, and that is why. We were not complaining. Mm -hmm. uh, that is because they were not destroying water bodies. They were not destroying farms. So we knew that the gold was there. We needed to buy uh, to mine because after all, God was not. Uh, I don't want to use a word. Uh, was, God was smart enough to say, "Ghana, get gold. Other countries don't get it." So, but God was trying to say that, please mine it responsibly. He didn't curse us with them. He endowed us and blessed us with the gold and all those it's things. In Genesis. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But now we are mining and cursing ourselves mm -hmm. by polluting our water body. So that's, that's the problem. I think we need to, for me, my, my proposal has been there even at the commission. I left some things there. One, I think we need to recategorize mining mm -hmm. so that you have some middle belt. You know, middle of the road, uh, because those who do it now with excavators, trammels, and all this, they are not people who are aching out a living. They are not callous type of people. No, 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 no. They are people who are making money. money yeah. I have seen studies, that, uh, uh, a scientific study, that indicated a, a particular mine, one mine every week, every two weeks, $24 million. Sometimes not 24, not 24 million cities, $24 million. So, uh, you know, this man cannot rent excavator. Now it is 8,000. This, uh, when, I, when we were talking, I thought it was 4,000. Now the prices have gone up. 8,000 a day. So he, uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe now he can, but when he started, <laughs> when he started, he couldn't have he couldn't afford, it. afford it, you know. So it's a real business that we need to clearly put bonds and then you know, regulate them differently. When you go to the large scale, the reason why our institutions, our regulatory institutions are able to regulate the large scale better is because there are only 16. 16 large scale mines in this country, major proper large scale mines, 16. So 
anything that happens, Menas Commission knows they will go there. Anything that happens, uh, uh, EPA will go there. If there's, there's some sanctions, they will do it quickly. But this one, a lot of, you know, excavations, a lot of mutilations in my own western region alone. The estimate is that uh, there are about 11,000 spots. Wow. Hot spot of Galamse, 11,000. In the whole country, about 500,000 500, spots. So, so they are, it becomes so difficult to, 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 to handle. But I think one, I support the water bodies, it, they must, it must be stopped. It doesn't, for me, whether it's emergency or state of emergency, it just has to stop because the law says don't do it. And I want to, I want to get the final word of, of Carlos and we'll let him go. And we'll go for a break very quickly. When we come back, we'll look at the alternative ways that really uh, people who are involved in illegal mining, now that we want to stop it, uh, could be used to help them. Carlos, uh, you were talking about, you said you told the chiefs that you're no more interested in illegal mining. Yes. So you want to stop this completely. Uh, how, what are you going to do to sustain yourself and your family? Well, at first, when there is no galamse, our people live. They use farming to live. Now, I came to Kumasi and started construction. I think not too much, but I'm happy than doing galamse because uh, the med we are using to do galamse is it spoiled the water. Mm. But we call it med. Med. Mm. And when, even when a little one enter into your stomach, you can run for the whole day. You see? So I sat down one day and I said, ah, we are doing by to ourselves. I can run now bet with my life. If there is no measure to stop galamse, in 10 years' time, if Ghana gets um, 10, uh, 100 bars of cocoa the whole year, I will bet with my life. Mm. They should kill me. Do you have any health complications because of your involvement in illegal mining? Health. 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 Like, health. Are you well? Are you well? well? As for me, dear, I always uh, take care of myself. But my colleagues, they involve our drugs. Mm. That's after one year or two years, you see the effect on them. Like what? Like a young guy, he will take a drug because of the hard work. Mm. If we see him, he become an old. Sons one, two cannot hold things right. Mm. You see them shivering. Mm. Sometimes, too, you see, the life is not good to be there. But you, you're not sick. Everything is okay oh, with everything you. Everything is wise. okay. One thing that makes me sad, that's 2019. I went to Pristia in Suta. We were doing grains. And when I went there, the Chinese are destroying the forest. So we two are following them. The forestry came in there. Bias, the, in Suta. Yeah. yeah. The forestry came there and they arrest us. Mm -hmm. We are six people. Mm -hmm. And then the Chinese workers to make it ten. And they released the Chinese workers. So 2019, they sent us to Pristia police station. At first, they sent us to the Forestry Commission office. And they asked us to pay 200 cities. And we said that we don't have. So they later, they sent it to the police. And then the CID collect 1,500. So first March 2019, since March, I was, I was in CES. Then I called my brother, and then he paid the money. So when he paid the money, they should release me for me to go. They say that if the, the rest of the people did not get the money, they will not receive me. And I asked them why. And they said that because if they send them to court, the report say that we are six. Why five people came to the court? And they have to answer that. And then I asked the CID that, why the Chinese are doing that and I'm a Ghanaian? Mm. You arrest me and then they leave the Chinese people. And he said that that is Ghana for you. That's what he told you? That is what he told me. Carlos, I want to say thank you so much for joining us on Agenda tonight. But I have mm. one thing to say. Mm. Whether illegal or they are giving them lances, we are all destroying the water mm -hmm. and then the land. Because those who are doing the last key, when they dig the 
uh, the pit. pit. And then if the, the dirty water flow into the, the pit they have mining, one week or more, you have to open the dirty water for it to go so that you can get the clean water. When, when you open the dirty water, the dirty water will go straight to the stream. Mm. And me too, I'm doing a small scale. And me too, I'm destroying this, uh, the water. So two of us are destroying the water. So it takes the chiefs. Me, I don't want to involve the security personnel. Why? Because they take bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Did they ever take bribe from you? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. Aside from yes. the yes. aside from yes. the they have collected five million from me when they came for my pumping machine. Wait, old Ghana CD, old cities yeah. five million. Yeah. Five, or you mean yes. five hundred Ghana cities? Five hundred Ghana cities. Okay. Yes. When they came, we were doing and then they came and arrested and they collect my pumping machine and they started from thousand. I said I don't have thousand. And that and I have one sponsor and then he came and paid five hundred. The community police, that he came with the policeman and then come, came for my pumping machine. Now he is doing, if he want to buy my land, the land I bought, he want to buy it. <laughs> I have his number. That is why I say I can give my, the numbers to you, then you pretend you want to do Galamsi. I have the chiefs, I have the prominent people who are doing that. Carlos. So the government is put and end to all the galamsey, and then they look at it again, how we can do it so I successfully, so that there are water bodies. That is why I said, within 10 years, we will not get food to eat, we will not get water to drink, and then we will not get cocoa to export. Carlos, thank you so much for joining us on Agenda uh, thank tonight. You. Thank you. So, uh, Carlos, get in applause there. Please have a seat. Uh, Carlos, please Ciao. sit down. Yes. Sit down for us, and uh, we're, you're still here on agenda. Uh, Carlos receiving applause there. But when we come back, you recall that in 2021, the government launched, and it was actually launched by the president, the National Alternative Employment and Livelihood Program for Illegal Miners. What happened to that? What has been the success of that? And how do we look around it and other, other measures to ensure that we are able to give these illegal miners sustainable uh, lifestyles moving forward? Don't go away. Stay with us. And you're watching Agenda on TV3, you're welcome back. We're talking about beyond the military deployment, what is next in this fight against illegal mining and ensuring that we are having a sustainable economic activity in this country. You just heard Carlos giving us those details. Uh, well, you watched him as well, giving us those details uh, because he's been involved in illegal mining. But we want to look at the alternative ways and measures moving forward. It doesn't look like we've really made a lot of gains trying to get people off our lands and water bodies. Because you're looking at over 1 million people, illegal miners, estimation, who are involved in this. And yet you're looking at 80,000 per the, the, the figure giving us. Well, the question, of course, is that <clears throat> some of these data are thrown around. <laughs> and oftentimes I'm suspicious as to how real they are. Of which one? The one million or the one on the website? Well, I'm just talking about data. Oh. Data in general. In Ghana, we just like to play around with figures. I'm not a statistician, so I cannot claim any expertise. But when you look at the reality, it was then that you begin to ask yourself, is this really true? The issue is that how, who has monitored and recorded all these people who are supposed to be allegedly involved in illegal money? That's one. Number two, what step are you taking in relation to them, either individually or possibly group-wise? Because I think this is more of a group issue than individual. And so if you have that data, then you have to try and find out what is the alternative employment that you are talking about. My view has always been that we are, God has given us very fertile land. And this fertile land, if you see the amount of food that we import, you ask yourself, 
why? Why are we importing so much food? Why can we not produce those food? I was a Christian uh, Hi. high on Saturday because I'm the chairman of the Board of Trustees. And I remember Professor Steve Adais saying that they give them six, six meals, it? six meals in a day. And that at lunchtime they make sure that the food they eat are indigenous food that's produced in Ghana. And I was excited to hear him say that because when you go to the shops and you will see all what is displayed, you even go to uh, Makola and uh, these other markets, you see that much of what is there is imported products that are being sold. But I was in, uh, uh, I was in Turkey in June. And I, you go to the shops, and it's amazing to see the shops are full. But look at the label of each of the products which is there. It is from, from Turkey. Turkey. You will even see electronic products and the rest of them. They are made in Turkey. So I was asking myself, if Turkey can do it, why can Ghana also not do it? Because now we're talking about these lands that they are devastating and polluting. Now, the amount of food that those, that land can produce can feed us so that we don't import a single item. We can even be able to export some of them. You know, Kenya exports flowers to Europe mm -hmm. regularly. But they also export okra, peppers, and the other things. Now, the climate here is the same as that one there. So I've always looked at Accra Plains eh? from here to Adan. Every time I drive there, I go crazy because I ask myself, I said, ah, the Volta River is here. If we irrigate the Accra Plains, we can be producing peppers, okra, uh, 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 tomatoes, and the rest of them. And we can harvest them in the morning. There will be a kotoka in the afternoon. In the evening, they are flown to Paris, Berlin, London. And in the morning, it is on the market there. No refrigeration required. And the people, they prefer to eat what? Fresh, fresh, fresh food. That can bring in billions of dollars to our country. So the question I kept asking myself is that, am I, in fact, sometimes I tell my colleagues that I'm, uh, I know that I'm the only madman around <laughs> because the kind of ideas that come into my, my head, whether they themselves also don't see it. <laughs> So uh, I just want to understand exactly what you're saying, that perhaps this time there's a need to reclaim as much lands as possible just so we can grow these to make extra money. Is, that, fact, what you're, is that the point? Yeah, exactly. In fact, the truth is that they are selling the cocoa, the chiefs are selling the cocoa farms and giving it to the, these Chinese to do galamse on them. Prof, how do you think we can, what kind of alternative measures do we need? But first of all, how do we make this National Alternative Employment and Livelihood Program for illegal miners that was initiated in 2021, how do we make it work effectively? First of all, I don't think that the alternative employment should be only for the miners. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, the economy should be much more employment intensive. Okay. And that means that the whole economic system if you have the situation whereby you go and borrow money at 35 percent and above, and so there's a, a bigger economic issues which are not being addressed. But let me quickly say that nobody can say I am doing illegality because I'm poor. Mm -hmm. If we go along that trajectory, we are in trouble. Then we are actually legalizing 
evil. And the only reason is that I don't have a job. I can do whatever. So let us be very careful about that. Number two, let me step back. I think that we have chiefs which are giving these lands, paramount chiefs, can be gazetted. People don't know that to be a paramount chief in Ghana, the government should gazette you. And I think that we must be very serious about this. And also, when we are talking about, so long as the young people are finding that it's much more profitable, they are likely to go into it. But what is needed is not so-called an agency of alternative, but rather creating an enabling environment. Because you mentioned about 80,000. Mm. We are talking about 2 million you mentioned, or, exactly. which even the figures are wrong. Mm. So it is not these, quote unquote, political uh, you know, groups, which all of them have it. They used to call it youth employment before agency, agency and other things. It just meant to satisfy the, the, the boys that follow them. It's not the one that is providing employment for the people in uh, Wasakropon, Amenfi, and other things. Those require a different strategy, which is much more broader and which is incentive based, one which allows you to access credit easily. But let us not also say that oh, they can do whatever they want to do because these things are not forthcoming. I just want to get clarity on the chief and the gazetting bit you mentioned. Yes. What did you mean by that? What I'm saying is that national must be distilled. Yes. Okay. Must be and gazetted. they can be distilled, yeah. not necessarily. We don't wait for Asante Hime. No. The government has an instrument of recognizing a chief, fortunately or unfortunately. And if you go to some of the places, and somebody sits there and say he's the chief. This is where we must direct, as you're saying, we must now direct our attention to the chiefs, to the DCEs, to the security coordinators who are there, the MPs, because unless we deal with them, we are not going to solve because they will go and come and be hypocritical. And let me say lastly, I think that at least for the water bodies and the forest, all the presidential candidates must be forced to That's declare, right. declare yeah. that they support that all our water bodies and forests are no-go areas yeah, yeah. and nobody should take a political advantage right. of it. Mm. Let me get your word on mm. really the alternatives moving forward. Yeah, yeah well, but, but back on the water body, it will not even be a law, I mean yeah. like... It, it is what the law says. The law is, is there. there. Yes, it is there. The law is there. So, so, so I agree. I'm just agreeing with yeah. you. But back to the question of alternative. I've been involved in the mining industry for some, for some time. Mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been at the operations level and then moving to corporate and all that. But I, I, have, I have grown some revulsion for alternative livelihood mm -hmm. projects, alternatives. Because when somebody is in a mine in the Galamsey and gets 200 CDs a day, mm -hmm. What alternative okay, would be could, for him, for him to, to do? Right. You know, and, and uh, you need to define your target mm. of the alternative. That's right. In my particular experiment, uh, when I was working uh, as a younger person, we realized that the alternative only favored women yeah. who were actually carrying burden mm. and they would have to drink energetics every day. And so, so uh, doing the oil palm thing for them, to, well, they were happy. Yeah, but the core people in the Galamse, they're you know doing the farming thing, whose re, you know, if you com the comparative uh, returns are lower, they won't they, they won't do it. it. It has never succeeded. I have seen it myself. I've been involved in creating. When I was at the commission, we created 37 hectare, the, the hectares of, uh, of oil palm in Bogosu Pristia area. Ask me how many Galamse years stopped because of that? Mm. No. And, and, you know, we do it for them. Typically, I mean, say, okay, bring your land, and we provide you with almost everything. But those who are in the core, they won't. I was involved in a pro project in uh, Awudia, a, a place called Awudia. Go Fills, at that time, I was working for them. It was a, a $20 million project. They wanted to, you know, create an, a, a proper 
uh, what do you call it, the value addition okay. to, to, to this uh, 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 product. You know, we went to the farm, we went to the people and said, bring your, farm, bring your land, we'll do everything for you. We'll pay you to do your work. Every day we'll pay you. And the young guys said, oh, look, man, uh, we have something else to do. <laughs> now, before we realized, people had built, because they had heard uh, Goldfield was coming to do this big project. Okay. People had come to build a metropolis there with, because they were expecting compensation. compensation. Okay. So okay. we did the analysis again, and the project that we were going to invest in 20 million, the cost was 19 million in compensation. Then the, my, my, my people said, no way. Enough is enough. Let me get your, your final word in about 40 seconds, and I'll give mm -hmm. the rest of the time to uh, council and then Professor Stephen. Yes, I, I think we are in a very serious crisis. And I think there must be a genuine effort to bring everybody on board. You see, I think one of the problems is that there hasn't been a genuine effort to bring everybody on board. So uh, what has been done in the past, we don't even review to say this is how we got, we got the result we got, and this is how much we are going to do. So I think we must see it as a national crisis, particularly the water bodies. Yeah. There's no way we should allow people to pollute the water bodies, because mercury, Mercury is a liquid metal. That's right. It's a metal. It's, yeah. Even though it's liquid, it's it a metal. metal. It doesn't degrade. No. When it gets to you, what it is, that is what it is. Yeah. And we have, the doctors have, have, have told us horrible right. impact of mercury. So that should, that should advise us. That should advise us. And uh, I'm coming to you, Council. He just said that we don't seem to have had any genuine attempt to want to deal. with this. Uh, done in organized labor saying no word. No strike never solved any pollution. I always